Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jingyu Liu from National Taiwan University Mobile and HCI Lab. Today, I'm going to present current viz, sensing and visualizing electric current flows of breadboard circuits. This is a joint work with my advisor, Mike Chen, and other members from National Taiwan University. In the world of circuit, there are two crucial information, voltage and current. How do we measure the voltage using today's tool? Uh, assume that we want to measure the voltage of the resistor here through the multimeter. Sorry. It's very easy and fast. And with the support of new tools, such as Toastboard, it can be much easier to know the whole voltage information on the breadboard. Thus, voltage measurement problem solved. But how do we measure the current using the state-of-the-art tools nowadays? First, we have to unplug the components to be in series with multimeter so that uh, we can measure the current. As everyone can see from the video, it is very cumbersome, right? After that, we have to restore to the original circuit. The whole procedure is not only time consuming, but also error prone while plugging as well as unplugging. The measurement approach has not been changed for 100 years, so how can we make it better? We present <laughs> We present current this. It would be very, very cool if we can directly see the current flow through a circuit, right? Like the Pikachu's tail. Yes, this is current Vs. By visualizing the current on the virtual circuit design tool, not only can we debug well, but it can provide awesome educational use for a novice to understand current behavior on the physical circuit. But how do we actually make it? We now know that measuring voltage is much easier than measuring current. So is there any way for us to avoid getting current information directly because it is too hard? We use Ohm's law, which tells us voltage divided by resistance is current. So if we know the voltage and the resistance, we can know the current. We add resistors between the holes on the breadboard to solve the problem. As we can obtain electric potential difference and the resistance between headers and headers, Calculation of the current flowing on a specific header is done by Ohm's law. However, current will flow not only the left, but also the right. So if we want to get the whole current of a specific header, another basic electrical theory is needed. Kirchhoff's current law, which tells us the sum of all current flowing through a node is zero. With the help of this law, we can add the current flowing to the left and flowing to the right, and finally get the whole current on a certain header. Thus, with these two basic electrical theories, we can get all currents flowing through every hose on the breadboard. Then I'll explain how we implement what we design into hardware in details. Here is the whole current this. We split it into three parts. First, the breadboard module. We weld 0402 resistors between every headers under the board. The resistance value is very small compared with other components, so it is negligible. Second, the multiplexer cascades. The intent of this is to choose which two headers are picked to measure the voltage between them so that the current can be calculated by the microcontroller unit later. Here's what it would look like. Two multiplexers choose two headers as inflow and outflow. However, 
we found that this naive approach is impractical because it costs too many multiplexers. Thus, we make a special design for current viz. The only difference is here. We connect the selector. After combining the selector, it can easily choose the adjacent headers like this. But why can we solve all the combinations of inflow header and outflow header by just measuring them adjacently? Take an example like this. If we want to measure the current between the first and the fifth header, we can simply add four adjacent measurements to get it without preparing all combinations as inflow and outflow header in advance. With our design, we can easily decrease the numbers of multiplexers and GPIOs, 19% and 59% lesser, respectively. Thirdly, data processor part. After picking two headers as inflow and outflow, we haven't finished yet. We must amplify the signal so that it can show in the virtual circuit design tool. After picking the two headers, we need to use amplifier to amplify the electric potential difference because the difference value is, is too small. If we want to calculate from microcontroller units, it needs to be amplified. But maybe the amplitude is not enough. It will give the feedback to the microcontroller unit to change another amplifier with bigger gain. And current can be calculated. Then we enter the software part. We choose freezing for current visualization because it is one of the most popular software in open source community. Here is our design interface. First, there are current flows displayed in real time because we can keep tracking them on our modified breadboard. Second, the actual value of amperage will pop up by mouse cursor hovering. It can be used not only for debugging, but for educational use to novices, understanding what currents acts like. Third, there is a heat map for better understanding the approximate current if you don't want to hover cursor on it. We present a new system which can actively measure the current information and display in the virtual circuit design tool. Moreover, it can save a large amount of time in the debugging process. Current Viz provides measurement in real time and applied on the ubiquitous hardware. Last but not least, it can visualize the virtual current information it can not only be used in debugging process, but used as educational use to understand the actual behavior of current. Let me summarize for circuit prototyping. It is a complicated and complex field that seldom be regarded. There is no standard approach while encountering a problem. However, we have extracted the high level concept of circuit prototyping which is easily understood by everyone. It can split into three parts, construct, debug, and reproduce. Let's talk about construct first. At the beginning of circuit prototyping, you may think of an idea and, or search a design from the internet. Then you take out a breadboard and start getting hands dirty with it for validating your idea. Uh, to most people, while struggling with uh, while struggling with the breadboard, we also duplicate the wires and components synchronously onto the virtual circuit design tools for proceeding debugging support. Mm, yep, uh, he is diligently assembling components on the breadboard while using virtual circuit design tools freezing. But, but I think it looks more like slacking off at work by browsing Facebook as playing the th therapeutic and he healing gadget with left hand. Okay, so back to topic. We call this process construct. Then it's the debug part. Having the circuit synchronous on the breadboard and virtual circuit design tool, we will switch back and forth between them for debugging. Little modification on the software is inexpensive for trial and error, so we keep doing experiments on the virtual circuit design tool. 
then we can implement it on the hardware in order to step by step forward. The, f the whole procedure can be done over and over again. It is usually annoying and dull. We call this process debug. The final part is reproduce. After checking the circuit is working not only on the hardware, but also on the software, we can start carrying it out, reproducing it, or sharing on the internet. We call the process reproduce. Circuit sense present before is for construct part, which can automatically recognize the components on the breadboard and show it on the software, so we don't have to duplicate the schematic diagram anymore. Current Vs is for debug. It can effectively effectively solve the problem on the hardware through knowing the current information on the virtual circuit design tool in real time, which saves a lot amount of time while debugging. And circuits that last year present here, also from our lab, is for reproduce process, which can modulize the final circuit for easy reproduction and sharing on the internet in a more neat way. Through the three tools we've invented, the whole circuit prototyping process can be handled very fluently and efficiently. Thank you for your attention. I'm Jingyu Liu from National Taiwan University Mobile and HCI Lab. Don't forget to come to our SIC demo tonight to see Pikachu. Thank you. All right. This would be the time to ask the last questions. Come on over. People have questions? Gerard Laput, Carnegie Mellon University. Great work, and I love the costume. Um, can you just clarify a little bit, um, when you put the resistors in between the breadboard uh, probe points, yes. how do you avoid like shorting the circuit? Because the, they're basically connected. Uh, you mean short? Short okay. in the circuit. Uh, basically, because the resistance value is very small. So uh, in the whole circuit, uh, when we are calculating this, the current, it's negligible and it is we print it in advance so if there's no need to avoid that because if it's broken uh, if it's short we what we need to change is change a new board on it so th there's no short problem on it i think okay so there's just an assumption that the current or the resistance is small enough that the yes, it okay. didn't influence the original circuit. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, thank you. So uh, you presented two systems, circuit sense and current piece, right? Yeah, from our lab. Yeah, yes. yeah. So natural question is, is it possible to combine the two in a single hardware? Is there an interference or trivial or difficult? You mean combine it? Yeah, uh, we yeah. haven't combined it yet, but in the, maybe in the future, in the future work, we, we might yeah, combine all the works to make it a whole system. So you say it's possible? Yes. Would it be possible to combine this with the, with the analog FP, FPAA kind of approach? I'm just wondering, like, to actually watch the consumption would be an interesting thing, too. I don't know if it's possible. Evan, where are you? Is it possible? You're saying yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if there's no more pressing questions, is there one? If not, then we're finishing the circuit session. Let's thank all the five speakers.